Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my Lucha Underground review. Um, I know it's been a while since I've said that. Um, I think the last time I did a Lucha Underground review was in the summer. Uh, you know, after the first Ultima Lucha uh, that took place at the end of Season 1. Well, but pretty much what happened was my friend was supposed to do it with me, but then he backed out. And then I just never had time to restart them again because... Um, I had a really busy school semester that semester so I didn't have as much time to review Lucha Underground as I would have liked to and um, then you know I got busy um, over winter break uh, with catching up on other things so I never had time to do it then uh, but now I have time to do it now and it almost didn't happen I am gonna tell you a story about that originally they had season 2 on Netflix but then they took Lucha Underground off of Netflix um, and I pretty much had no way to watch it. I could have done Hulu, uh, the Hulu way, but you have to pay an extra fee to watch it on Hulu. Um, and I tried doing Amazon Prime, and I'm using my sister's account at the moment. But pretty much what happened is you still have to buy it even with Amazon Prime. However, um, she ended up um, buying it for me for my birthday. So thank God my birthday's coming up. And now I finally can watch uh, Lucha Underground Season 2, which I'm very excited about. I've been waiting for the longest time to watch Season 2. I watched the first five episodes, so uh, this stuff isn't exactly new to me. Um, I might, you know, remember some of it, might not, because it's been, you know, obviously a few months since I've seen it. I remember this episode pretty well because it was a pretty significant episode, but um, yeah, I'm here to give you guys my review of, my review of it now. Um... But yeah, I'm very excited to start watching Lucha Underground. And these reviews will be structured the same way where I review, you know, one per episode. Um, and, you know, I'll say when the episode was taped, you know, um, when it came out. And then I'll just review the episode itself. So it really won't be much different. But uh, yeah, I even had to two watch the highlights. Uh, there was like this 37 minutes of highlights. Um, of like the first season except Ultima Lucha, but I didn't really need to watch Ultima Lucha again because I'd seen it previously um, Just so that way, uh, you know, I could uh, I could be back up to speed about um, things, but Yeah, I'm here to give you guys though my review of Lucha Underground Season 2, so let's get it started. So obviously um, Since the first season was a success they brought it back for a second season, which obviously made sense. I think uh, them putting it back for a second season was a great idea. Um, and it just showed how much of the, fir the first season was a success. And now I can imagine what's probably going to happen is the first few episodes um, will be new stuff. But it's also going to be, you know, storylines that they kind of started from Ultima Lucha. Um, but then obviously once the season really gets going, uh, they'll actually um, start new storylines. But... Let's get right into it. Um, so yeah, this is season two, episode one, the season premiere, and this episode is called "A Much Darker Place." And obviously, that title makes sense uh, with uh, the kind of the theme of this episode. And this episode was taped on November fourteenth, two thousand fifteen, and it aired on January twenty seventh, two thousand sixteen, and. Now that I've kind of gone through that, all that, let's talk about the actual episode itself. Um, it starts off with Vampiro, um, who's been in a mental hospital for six months because I believe Lucha Underground had been off the air for about that amount of time because Lucha, um, Ultima Lucha um, took place in August. So August, September, January, February. Well, no, August, September... Um, October, November, June. So yeah, maybe about five months. Um, and he's pretty much, you know, in a mental um, hospital. Um, I forget the name of it um, off the top of my head. I meant to look it up. I think it's called Use Man Hospital, but I don't exactly remember. And this is after the events of um, the events of when he faced Pentagon Junior in the death match, um, and he, you know, he pretty much revealed that he was his master. And he pretty much went to therapy um, for a while. And they call him by his real name, Ian Hodgkinson's, which obviously makes sense. Um, so, 
and the doctors evaluated him. This is like his graduation day, and he can go home um, if you know the doctor sees him able to. And he t he asks. Uh, we find out that there's been um, 180 days without any accidents, um, and the doctor is asking him if he's had any nightmares and if he's had you know any um, violent attacks and stuff. And, you know, Ann Hodgkins says, says uh, no. Um, and it shows clips, you know, of, uh, you know, the death match with Pentagon Jr. as this is happening. And um, he, t he recommends that he takes this medication. It's like really strong medication uh, to help him with his mental um, it illness. And then um, he also tells uh, Vampiro... Not to go around people that are going to put him back in that violent state. Which obviously we knew that was going to happen. So Then afterwards, um, Vampiro attacks the doctor and he beats him up. Um, other security guards come in and try to break it up. But Vampiro punches one of them in the face. He chokes one of them up against the wall. And he bites uh, the other ones like back of the throat out. And we find out that this was all just... Um, you know, uh, like a hallucination. Um, and Vampiro agrees to it. So somebody, um, he says that somebody can pick him up. And who picks him up? None other than Matt Stryker. Um, obviously his commentary colleague. And, you know, they just want to get out of here. And Vampiro asks if they still have a job. And Matt Stryker says, um, well, we've been invited back to the temple, but it's not the same as what's what as it once was. And Vampiro is confused by this, and Matt Stryker says um, that it's um, that it has much darker power, or something like that. He says it's in a much darker place, which is uh, you know, the name of the episode because uh, we find out that um, Katrina and Mel Muertes, who at this time is the Lucha Underground champion. Um, are in charge of the temple because of uh, because Dario Cueto is on the run. Um, and I really liked this uh, segment. It's kind of something you really haven't seen before. It really was like something you would have seen like in a TV series. Uh, so I thought it was kind of cool in that aspect. Um, and it kind of is what makes Lucha Underground feels different than any other uh, wrestling promotion. And obviously like I like that this kind of was the first thing you saw of the new season because uh, I thought it made the most sense um, to kind of see like a follow up on Vampiro and I think what what it was too is they wanted to keep Vampiro on commentary but they obviously had to find a reason to do that um, you know because obviously they still probably want him to be a part of that Pentagon Junior part of the storyline so I actually kind of like what they did where they have uh, him actually go to you know therapy and go to a mental institution and stuff. Um, and have t and have him take medication. Have him try to be normal. So, I actually thought that made sense. I do think we are going to see Vampiro do something um, eventually in this season uh, with Pentagon Junior or something. Um, but they're just kind of you know, pull, um, just they just kind of don't really want to do it all at once. I think they still want to keep him on commentary. So, yeah, the, that that explains the commentary team. It's uh, Matt Stryker and Vampiro. But before we even get to anything like that. Uh, Katrina's in her office and um, somebody comes in and I think we were supposed to have thought that it was maybe Dario Cueto. That's who I thought it was anyways. And Katrina even says, I th thought you would show up. But it's actually Phoenix, the uh, gift of the gods champion. And she even says that it's just like, you know, um, a phoenix did not stay down. They continue to want to rise up because that's kind of what a phoenix is. And Phoenix wants to cash in his Gift of the Gods championship uh, to face Mil Mortez for the title. Because that's obviously the stipulation if you're the Gift of, gift of the uh, Gods champion. But, um, you know, Katrina says that she has to. he has to wait till next week. But that's if he's the champion next Well, I should say the next episode. Um, but that's if he's the champion on the ne in the next episode because... Obviously, we found out at the end of the first season that King Quano was, uh, or King Quano, whatever, however you say his name, I'll say King Quano, 
was hunting Phoenix and, um, you know, wanting this title. And Katrina makes that match. Phoenix versus King Cueno for the uh, Gift of the Gods Championship. And that was pretty much uh, that. Um, I really like this segment. Um, and obviously, I kind of like, you know, that Phoenix is the Gift of the Gods Champion. Uh, because obviously, Mel Moites and Phoenix have a history with each other from the first season, from their, you know, grave consequences and death matches. Um, so obviously, I kind of am fine with them having like one more match with each other. So I really like this. But then we had the actual, then this show actually gets in, underway. Uh, we had the return of the win announcer, Melissa Santos. And, you know, it actually shows Matt Stryker and Vampiro on commentary. Um, and we uh, we see that um, Mel Muertes is, like, watching the show since he's, like, in charge. And, you know, Katrina mentions this, um, saying that, um, you know... Pretty much, uh, Mel Moites is, like, watching the show, like, from on top of the stadium, pretty much. Which is actually pretty cool. Um, and, uh, we had the first match. It was the Gift of the Gods Championship match. Uh, Gift of the Gods Champion Phoenix versus King Cuerno. Um, this was a great way to kick off the first season of Lucha Underground with a great, f um, first match. Um, it really was awesome. If you haven't seen this match, definitely go check it out. Uh, whether you watch it on Amazon Prime or YouTube or something like that. And they start, you know, hitting quick um, chain wrestling moves on each other with, you know, quick splashes and uh, quick arm drags and things like that. But then eventually uh, King Quano, um, you know, p um, pretty much um, is getting his ass kicked. So he kind of uh, takes a minute to kind of recollect himself and roll outside the ring. Phoenix tries to attack him, but King Quano attacks him. And he hits a... Draping DDT from the apron onto the floor. And then he hits a suicide dive uh, right onto the outside. Puts uh, Phoenix in the ring, covers him. Phoenix kicks out. And uh, then eventually uh, Phoenix hits a springboard drop kick right across King Quano's chest. Um, he hits a really cool um, springboard arm, like quick arm drag from the top tone buckle, which was awesome. And um, Phoenix hits a super kick right to the ribs. He hits a springboard cutter onto uh, King Quano. And then he eventually hits one later on in the match where he hits a springboard cutter and turns it into a dragon sleeper. King Quano gets um, Phoenix into a uh, surfboard uh, submission and turns it into a dragon sleeper while he's got the surfboard submission on him, which was awesome. And... Um, then King Quano hits a... And then Phoenix hits a super kick out of the corner onto King Quano. Um, King Quano hits the thrill of the hunt. Um, but Phoenix kicks out, which obviously was a big deal because that's King Quano's finisher. And I'm obviously okay with him, you know, kicking out of his finisher because this is a big... De um, this is a big match for, you know, the Gift of the Gods title. It's the first match, you know, of the new season. I think you should start, kick it off with a Bane. And... Phoenix hits a drop kick from the top tone buckle right across the back of the head of uh, King Quano. Uh, but then eventually uh, Phoenix go hits a super kick and then he goes for his finisher. But King Quano counters, goes for the uh, throw of the hunt, but it gets countered. And then he hits a tombstone pile driver with like Phoenix's legs um, hooked and gets the win. And King Quano becomes the new. Gift of the Gods champion, which I actually, when I watched the match at the time, the first time around, I actually was pretty surprised about. I actually thought they were going to utilize this to kind of really put Phoenix over and set up to the uh, match between Mel Mortez and Phoenix in the future. But they actually gave it to King Quano, which I was pretty surprised about, and I really didn't have any issues with it because um, I think what's going to happen is, uh, you know, well, obviously I'll get into why, but I think it's going to lead to Phoenix chasing King Quano for the belts. Um, so that way... Um, when he finally does win the championship, um, you know, if he does, if he's going to win it back, um, it would really put, you know, Phoenix as more of a worthy contender to Mil Mortez when he wins it. So I actually kind of like the way they did this. And I, I'm going to do star ratings for these episodes just because, um, I feel like it. And this match was great. I gave it four stars. I just thought it was a great, really back and forth match for the championship. So I really liked it. And then, um... Angelico, Son of Havoc, and Ivelisse arrive to the arena. 
um, well, the temple, I should say. Um, and they run into Katrina, and they want their trios championships back from the Disciples of Death, but Katrina says no, um, and says that Mel Mortis have a, has a different match in mind. Um, she makes a triple threat, well, a three-way match between Eva Lee, Son of Havoc, and Angelico, but they don't want to do that three-way because obviously they know that they're doing this to kind of turn them against each other so that way they don't have to challenge them for the trio's titles. Uh, but obviously, too, they're also doing it. Um, they just literally spent a whole year trying to become a tag te team or a, a stable. Um, they don't want to just throw that all away. But then when Katrina says that a shot at the... Uh, Lucha Underground Championships on the line, they agree because that's more important than, you know, the Trios Tag Team titles. Um, or, the, or just the Trios Championships. Uh, but I really like this segment a lot. I thought, it, you know, it set up the main event really well. And I thought uh, it was kind of a nice way for Mel Muertes and uh, Katrina to kind of get one over on, you know, Ivelisse and Helico and uh, Son of Havoc. And afterwards, uh, Eva Lee's comes up and says that when she wins the Lucha Underground Championship, she's coming after Katrina. Uh, so I liked it. And then, this wasn't next, but I'm just going to mention it because the match was next. But King Quano's backstage, and um, Katrina comes up and says, um, you know, congratulates him on winning the title and wants to make sure that the deal is still intact and King Kwano says that she has nothing to worry about and then the lights flash and she disappears. So what pretty much is happening here is King Kwano is going to stay the uh, gift of the God's champion. Um, and, you know, as long as he stays champion, um, nobody, he won't challenge uh, Mil Muertes for the Lucha Underground Championship. I actually like this. I think it makes sense. Um, and obviously, it's a nice, you know, beneficial because King Quano could be a champion and Mil Mortez could stay champion so I think it's beneficial for all parties involved and then we had the three way for the Lucha Underground Championship number one contenders uh, match um, and Helico versus Son of Havoc versus Eva Elise. I find this kind of funny because um, Katrina had to come out and whisper this into Melissa Santos ear because uh you know, the commentators and stuff don't see the backstage segments because, you know, when they actually tape these matches, I think they, you know, don't tape the backstage segments right away. They think they wait until, you know, probably after the matches there or something. I don't really know how they do it, but um, if you're at the arena live, you don't really know the storylines, which probably is like a hindrance to go into like a Lucha Underground live is you are just seeing people wrestle. For the sake, uh, without a storyline or anything like that, and that's kind of like you know one of the bi biggest parts of wrestling. I mean, obviously, occasionally you, um, I feel like though it's at the same time, if you go to a show live, it really doesn't matter. But that's just the case. But um, then we uh, you know, had the match, and I thought the match was really good. Um, everybody kind of starts you know feeling each other out. Uh, they do a test of strength where Angelico continue, um, is kind of being a douche to um, Ivelisse by, by lifting his hand up and down. So Ivelisse charged both of them. Um, Angelico inadvertently hits a um, high knee into the corner right on to Ivelisse. And the Son of Havoc hits a uh, back, like a double backflip into the corner onto everybody. Uh, and, and it was like a hip, hip attack. And he hits a double suicide dive on everybody. Um, and Helico hits some really nice kicks, some really nice shots, like one to the back, right to the back of the head of Son of Havoc. Um, Son of Havoc hits a wicked bicycle kick right onto Ivelisse. He hits a, uh, backbreaker right onto Ivelisse. Um, but then eventually when, uh, Son of Havoc goes for the shooting star press, um, Ivelisse crotches him on the turnbuckle and rolls up in Helico for the win. And gets the win. But it was a really good match. I really liked the back and forth um, flow of the three-way. And I think uh, Eva Lee was actually a pretty cool person to win this match. Because when I watched the match at the time, I didn't think she was going to win. I thought it was either going to be, um, you know, Son of Havoc or Angelico. Um, just because, you know, I thought uh, Son of Havoc has been on the show since day one. And him and uh, Mel Muertes have a history with each other. Uh, since, you know, the episode where they faced off just before Ultima Lucha. 
and Angelico hasn't had a title match yet, and I thought he would have, like, you know, completely had a bond burner with, um, you know, Mil Muertes. But I actually kind of like that they went with the Ivelisse. It was a nice surprise, and it was kind of a nice moment. Uh, it was the first time that a woman has ever competed for the Lucha Underground Championship. I don't necessarily know, though, if this is the first time that a woman just in the history of professional wrestling competed for a world championship in a promotion. Uh, you guys would have to tell me about that because um, it could have happened somewhere else. We almost got it in WWE, uh, but then obviously it didn't happen. So you guys would have to t tell me about that, which I, I like that, though. I like that the woman in Lucha Underground are kind of seen at the same view as the men because they wrestle the men and... Pretty much they'll fight for the Lucha Underground title and stuff, and I really like it. Obviously, they can't do that here because where Lucha Underground is filmed has special rules and stuff like that where they can do that. So, I mean, they'll try it with the men and stuff too, and people will complain. So, that's a different topic for another day. But then um, we had the uh, Lucha Underground Championship match. Lucha Underground Champion Real Muertes versus um, Ivelisse. And before the match starts, the Disciples of Death come out and they get into a fight with Son of Havoc and Helico and Ivelisse. But Katrina holds her back, uh, pulls Ivelisse's hair, and Son of Havoc, not Son of Havoc, Mil Muertes, you know, holds her back while the Disciples of Death carry uh, Son of Havoc and then Helico away. So that way, Ivelisse won't have any help in the championship match. So I actually like the title match. Mil Muertes dominates them again in the beginning. And methodically picks apart um, Eva Lee. Back break. Oh, my voice is probably going to go really deep. There's really nothing I can do about that, though. But So I'm just going to keep going. But yeah, he hits a tilt to a back break onto um, Eva Lee. Um, but Eva Lee has, like, you know, some hope spots by hitting a wicked super kick onto, um, you know, uh, Mil Muertes and hits a Hurricane um, Mel Mortez goes for a spear when Katrina gets in the ring and distracts the release, but uh, she uh, moves out of the way and he inadvertently spears, spears Katrina. She rolls him up, but Mel Mortez kicks out, and then Mel Mortez hits a scoop slam into a flat liner for the win. Um, and Mel Mortez retains the title, which obviously that made sense because he just won the championship. Um, you know, at the end of the first season, it really didn't make sense to take the title off him right in the beginning of the season. This kind of puts over Mil Muertes as a strong champion. Um, and afterwards, when uh, Katrina goes for the lick of death, um, Mil Mort she doesn't do it and orders Mil Muertes to attack, um, you know, uh, Evilly some more. He goes to lay out again with the flat liner, but who runs out? None other than Prince Puma. He hits a super kick on him, and then he takes Ivelisse and runs away in his safety. And obviously this makes sense since, you know, at Ultima Lucha, Mil Muertes took the Lucha Underground Championship from uh, Prince Puma, so it made sense to kind of go back to that. Then afterwards, uh, Pentagon Jr. comes into the win. He hits a backstabber onto um, Mil Muertes, and then he takes his arm and breaks Mil Muertes' arm, just like he did, you know, to everybody else in Season 1 of Lucha Underground. Um, I, I like to call that the arm breaker until they come up with a new move for it. And, you know, afterwards it ends with Pentagon Jr. standing tall, Mil Muertes hurt, and Prince Puma. So I'm assuming this is going to build to a match maybe between Prince Puma and Mil Muertes. Not Mil Muertes, uh, you know, Pentagon Jr. where the winner will become the number one contender to the Lucha Underground Championship. And Prince Puma will win and then go on to face Mil Muertes. Um, probably on a future episode, because I don't think they're going to wait till Ultima Lucha to do that match, because that's way too long, but they're going to, probably on like a future episode where, you know, Mil Muertes will attain the title, and it will lead to, um, him just can, having a nice dominant reign. I don't expect him to hold the belt the whole season, but I think he'll hold it probably until like, you know, I don't know exactly how many episodes there are this season, I think I, I meant to look ahead, there's, uh, 26 episodes, so maybe he'll hold it till about episode, maybe... He'll hold it, I think, about to halfway through the season, and then he'll drop the belt to somebody. So, we'll obviously have to wait and see on that, though. But, uh, that wasn't the end of the show, though. The end of the show has, um, you know, um, shows 375 miles away from Boyle Heights. We see these three kids who want to, uh, go fight at the temple. So, I'm assuming they were meaning to go to the actual Lucha Underground temple, but... The Black Loudest catches up to them first 
and says she'll take him to the temple. So they go to like a temple that's actually not the Lucha Underground temple. And we see that Dario Cueto's there and they make fun of Black Lotus because she's a woman and obviously women and men can't fight as well as everybody likes to think. So Black Lotus attacks that guy um, and Dario Cueto charges them you know they say they love violence so Dario Cueto charges them 20 bucks each they pay the money and one of them asks who's fighting tonight and Dario Cueto says you are closes the door and we hear um Mantasna Cueto who you know obviously was locked up the whole season um um pretty much killed them I think um and we just see Dario Cueto counting his money in the background I actually like this uh, this really hypes up Mantasna Cueto because I'm assuming we're going to see him at some point and it makes Dario Cueto look like more of a villain. I wonder what they're going to do now that he's like on the run. So I like this and that was pretty much the end of you know the season premiere of season 2 of Lucha Underground and I thought it was a actually fantastic way to kick off the episode. Um, I like the way they focused largely on this episode of Mil Mortez and uh, Katrina taking over the temple. Uh, you know, by costing Phoenix his title and um, him retaining this belt later on in the show. I liked how they built to a future match between Prince Puma and Mel Mortez. And I liked uh, Pentagon Jr. breaking his arm at the end. And obviously I liked the Dario Cueto bit at the end as well. So if I had to give this episode a rating, I thought it was fantastic. I'm going to give it an A-. But that's pretty much the end of this review. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video. So that way... Um, people will see it and make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content and click on the bell so that way every time i upload a video you guys will get the notifications for it make sure you guys do the same thing for my cm brothers and on the talking data youtube channels and obviously you know this channel as well and that's pretty much it guys talk to you later